Father, we do ask you a blessing on tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see where we're at. We've got to move that. It'll be right in the middle of the video. And people will be thinking that's not a knot and all that somebody's had a little too much. <laughs> spirits. Well, different spirits. How's that? Yeah, praise yeah. God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glad to see everybody tonight. Welcome to everybody. We're not type of church that says, hey, this is so-and-so, but because I can't remember the name of people that go here. <laughs> y'all know that, don't you? But y'all know I try hard. <laughs> I want you to know tonight we're going to do something unique and different. Everything we do is unique and different. And sometimes it makes me sweat wondering how unique and different it's going to be in a really good way. But we want to uh, look at a couple of verses tonight. And... Uh, then we're just going to talk for a few minutes. If you then be risen with Christ, what does it say? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Amen? Amen. Well, where, is, where does Christ sit? On the right hand of God. Where is the right hand of God? Amen. There you go. We're all right. Was that all right? It's not a trick question. I'm not going to try to say he's sitting over here on this side of your shoulder and the bad angel's on that side of your shoulder. No, we're just, we're just saying, you know, not cartoons. We're just saying that it, it, Scripture says that we are to set our uh, affection on things that are above. We'll get that. If, if, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God and set your affection on things above and not on things of the, of the earth. That's okay. And we'll look at affection for a minute. In the original language, affection means to exercise the mind. mind. So when we say affection, it sounds like, well, you know, I really like chocolate. You know, you know, well, you know, or something like that, you know, it's something. But it means to exercise the mind to entertain. All right. Or have a sentiment or an opinion uh, but it's mentally, okay? Be mentally disposed. So it says, set your mind, exercise your mind, be entertained by the thoughts of what's in heaven Amen. where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Is that all right? Yeah. So this is scripture that says, it's all right for me to meditate on what heaven is like. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't want to be so heavenly focused that I'm no earthly good. And that's one of the things people always say that's hard to imagine. But I have seen people that were so spiritual that they, that, you know, they would forget to buy toilet paper. A lot of them in churches. You know, that very few spiritual people bring toilet paper to church and make sure there's some in there. I remember one time I thought, we'll just wait and see how long it is to some of these spiritual giants bring toilet paper. Believe me, I had to buy the toilet paper. Now, I've met a lot of people so spiritually minded they didn't realize the church needed the grass mowed. And one year we decided to wait and see if anybody would mow it. It got that tall. Wow. Then Mary King come by with a lawnmower and tried to mow it. <laughs> All the men in the church, it, apparently it was just too spiritual that somebody had to mow the grass. <laughs> so after that, I hired somebody to mow it. <laughs> That's the honest truth. See, sometimes we could be too heavenly focused. But that's not most of the time our problem is, is that we need to have our mind exercised. When my mind's laying around by itself being this limp thing of jello. When I was in the third grade, I had this teacher that did not, a science teacher, did not let her children watch television. I thought she was the meanest, cruelest woman in the universe. I didn't know I'd turn out to be just like her someday and think. She said it makes their mind a big, just a big, weak puddle. Mush. And... I don't know what that woman would do now. I hope she went to heaven. I hope she knew Jesus because by now you don't even make signs with your truck. They beep, beep, and honk and make noise for you. All the toys talk and think and imagine and tell you what to play. You know, you don't even get to imagine. And, and if we're not careful, we don't exercise our mind. And the Negro College Fund commercial said, ever since I was a little child, it says the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I would say that, that God could say that from heaven. I've, 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 I've saved your soul. I've come into you. You've been born again in the Spirit, but your mind is a terrible thing. Now, I don't want to know about y'all, but there's a picture on Facebook of me and Nella when we were young. We don't know That's when good. that was. We put that on there. 
I found it in a bunch of pictures that I had from making a video when my brother passed away. And out of all these pictures, it's supposed to make you feel old and supposed to make you feel, oh, my brother's gone. I just opened the things like that will jump out at you. I opened the CD case and opened the CD case out looking for a song I was looking for. These pictures just fell out on you. And they'll do that to you. Life will fall out on you. Right when you're trying to say, oh, I'm about over that. It just flops right out in your face. And you say, well, what am I going to do with it now? And I looked at this picture and that picture and that picture and looked. And there was one of us. I don't know where that one came from. I don't know. That has to be 1978, 79. It has to be way back there. Uh, I could put it up here, but she probably don't want me to. And uh, one, uh, I had hair. I had lots of hair. Barbers used to tell me you'll never lose your hair. Barbers don't know everything. And you know, and she weighed. She didn't even weigh ninety some pounds. I mean, but but that, but 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 you know, if you don't exercise that, look what we turn into. Look what I turn into. Let's say it that way. If you don't exercise. Things kind of lay down, don't they? Yeah. And he said to exercise the mind. So he said to set your affection on things above, above and not to exercise your mind on the things below. Because if we think about all the things below, and below is compared to a above, which makes it right here, doesn't it? Yeah. If I exercise my mind on what I could have did different, should have did different, may have done different, right. somebody else had done different. If I exercise my mind all the time about what they're talking about on talk radio and television and what the president's doing and what somebody else is doing and what somebody else should have done. Huh? If I exercise my mind on that, my mind will get very strong at looking down here. Amen. But if I exercise my mind on the things that are above, above not on the earth, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yes. That, that, that's a part of, of being risen, having new life in you, and seeking the things which are where Jesus is. Because one of these days, I'll let you in on a, not too big a secret, but sometimes our mind gets shocked by it. One of these days, you're going to be with Jesus. Amen. If you're His, and if you're not, you better figure out, because you sure don't want to wind up in the other location. Oh, no. Amen. Amen. But one of these days, I'm not going to retire I'm not looking for this moment where I can retire and I can ride off into the sunset and, you know, who knows what, get a travel trailer and move to the mountains like somebody wants to do. Or I'm going to go out west and start a <laughs> horse farm. I doubt that very seriously. One of these days, I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. And it's going to be so natural for me to be there. Huh? Amen. You see what I'm saying? And if I start to exercise my mind toward where I'm going, I'll start to act like where I'm going and not where I've been. Amen. That's the preacher coming out. If I start to exercise my mind toward heaven, then my family members are not gone from here. They're present there. Amen. See what I'm saying? As opposed to me looking around here for remnants that say they used to be here. There's a picture. They used to be here. There's a picture of their car. They used to be here. That's such that they used to be here. But if I start to exercise my mind to where Jesus is, and he draws all of his children to him sooner or later. Amen. Amen. And when I start to exercise that way, then my mind gets strong in that. And it starts to get. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been alive a long time. I'm not going to say I've been alive too long because I'm doing just right. But I remember when the muscle guys, people, don't look like the average guy at the gym. This was people on TV that were weightlifters didn't have muscles like women got at the gym. Women got muscles that men used to not have. And that's the honest truth. That's the honest truth. When I was a kid, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, I think that's what his name was, he used to do this thing, little exercise show, and he did jumping jacks. Man, he couldn't make it at the gym. Now they'd laugh him out of the gym. He lived be nearly 100 selling him juicers, though, didn't he? You know? He did well. But, you know... Somebody's exercised things a whole lot more. And if you exercise your doubt, your doubt will grow in your mind. And if you exercise your painful thoughts, then painful thoughts will grow and be real strong. But if you exercise yourself into heavenly things, thinking about Jesus, thinking about what He has prepared for us, and I know the Scripture says that He has prepared things for us, but it also says that we can't even conceive Hasn't entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love Him. That's pretty good, isn't it? 
And when I go start to focus in on that, then I'm not so hung up on what somebody's doing all around me because I know the simple things. Old folks knew that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And you could ask me what I've learned in the last four or five years. It's I've had this awakening that I realized that, man, all them people I thought was old in the 70s, they weren't as old as I thought they was. Yeah. Well, give you an example. I was telling her earlier today, you know, we talked all the time, but why won't they play so-and-so on the radio anymore? Right. Well, sometimes it's because they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Captain and Tennille is older than my mom and daddy, okay? Yeah. They, sang a, they sang a song when we were dating, okay? They must have been a lot older than I thought they was. <laughs> and then you look out and you go, man, I'm 55. If they were grown when I was in high school, no wonder they're about to go off. And then you go somebody and say, well, why don't they play them anymore? And I said, honey, it's been 20 years since they've had a record. We're talking about that today. That's the equivalent when I was in high school saying somebody had a hit record in 1958. And we said, well, them's them old folks. No wonder ain't nobody buying their records. But to me, it just happened the other day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all them old movie stars, they wasn't that old. They're just Clooney's age now. You know, 20 years, he's going to be, you know what I mean? And he'd be going, What happened? How did everybody age but me? Because yeah. I still feel. Right. Look in the mirror, I say, huh, but I still feel. Amen. 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 <laughs> and I have to set my affection for where I'm going. Amen. I was a little kid. I wanted to go to school because my only brother I had at that time went to school and I didn't have nobody to play with. And every day I'd cry because I didn't get to go to school. Boy, I learned that was a mistake. <laughs> but I did every day. I wanted to go. She cried every day because she went. <laughs> For a year. <laughs> I wanted to go. I didn't know what school was. Other kids went and had to be wonderful. So I set my affection on where I wanted to go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when you get in school, you want to be, we want to be the next thing. If you were in this grade, you want to be in here. You want, if you was in middle school, Junior high back then, you want to be in high school. Get out of high school, you want to be grown. Everybody wanted to go somewhere they weren't. And somehow when you grow up in life, it just sounds like you're happy just to sit right where you are. Knowing that everything in nature teaches you that that's not so. It's moving. And it's going to take you with it whether you want to go. If you don't believe it, go back to <coughs> kindergarten. They didn't have kindergarten when I was in school. That's how old I am. Wow. They didn't have it yet. <laughs> They just didn't have it. But go back to whatever desk you got in when you went to school and you probably won't fit in it anymore. You can't stay there, can you? You can't stay there, can you? Jay, you think you could fit back in the first grade desk? Be like that big chair. It'd be kind of difficult, wouldn't it? Man, I can't get it. We used to sleep on a twin size bed, a twin size bed together, and we got married. That ain't happening no more. We can't hardly get on the couch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course, we got a dog and three cats, and everybody wants a part of it. You understand what I mean? Now, this is important. I'm not being funny. I am being funny, but at the same time, I want you not being funny for a good reason. Because we realize everything the natural says. If you're 45 and in high school, you better be the teacher. Amen. Okay, it moved on. Even if it was your best years, it moved on. Amen. And things are like that. And somehow in life, we think we have to get a grip, a death grip on life, staying the way that it is. But life is going on because the way God has created things to work is you're going to graduate from this world. You're going to graduate. It will happen. You can't stay here forever. They have to help you out, but you're going to, the teachers have to say, just pass them to get them out of here. You're going to have to leave this world. You're not going to be able to stay here forever. You're not. And you can be all terrified of it and buying the hair dye and the, the vitamins yeah. and all the stuff that you can imagine to do. Take so much juice that you turn yellow or orange or whatever kind of juice you're drinking. <laughs> It was Frederick K.C. Price that said he turned yellow, and I just think that's funny. He drank so much carrot juice that he turned orange. Orange is what he said it was. Now that's doing something. What would it do for me? I don't know. Might make me fluorescent. I can't drink that much juice. But I want to set my affection. I want to exercise my mind about where I'm going. 
Because I want you to know we watched that video a while ago of that little baby, all them little babies. Where were they at? In the mother's womb, were they not? Huh. You could just stay for so long. I don't care how happy you were or weren't. You could only stay for so long. You had to come out. And that's how you got in this world. And you can only stay in the womb of this earth so long before you have to come out and be birthed into the heaven. I'm telling you, it's no different, nothing to be feared. Not a thing different than being born the first time, except you don't remember it. And you might not remember much of this world when you step over to how wonderful it is today. Amen. Amen. And the devil tries to tell you, you've lost your loved ones. You didn't lose them. They come up out and went on. Amen. You see what I'm saying? They graduated to a place where there's no pain and no sorrow, no sickness and no disease, Amen. no torment, no hate, no violence, Amen. nothing but Jesus. Amen. Amen. I mean, they graduated. All babies are not born at the same time. You notice that? Yeah. God didn't take all the women and get them pregnant at once and they all had their babies simultaneously, did they not? People are born into this world on a steady basis, but on an individual basis. And people leave this world on a steady individual basis. And maybe your loved one graduated before you because they outgrew. Yes, sir. What was, amen? Amen. Why well, some people get murdered? Well, they do. Some babies are aborted, but they still go to heaven. Amen. God can handle you getting there early. I think He can get over the fact that you got there early. But He needs you down here. Amen? What does He need you down here for? Because He needs some hands and some feet. And now let me finish. It says, set your affection on things which are above, not on the earth. For why? Well, how can I be afraid to die someday if I'm already dead? Think about that for a moment. Let that... Get that heavenly way of thinking start to come in. For you are dead and your life is hid. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ. With Christ. And I think that's going to say in God. Isn't that good? Amen. So I want you to know the devil says you're going to die. You need to tell him back, well, I already did. <laughs> I died with Jesus. Amen. What life do I have right now? Well, it's hid. Now, I always try to watch telling supernatural things, but, you know, at the same time, supernatural is what this is all about. I remember one day, at, I used to work at Honda Car Village down there, and I was walking across trying to mind my own business. I always try to mind my own business because I don't like to get in the middle of stuff. I just don't. I just, I don't like to get in the middle of people's arguments and their stuff. And I just don't like to. But I was walking across there one day to go to the Coke machine, and there was somebody over there running their mouth how God doesn't do supernatural things anymore. <laughs> Two little old poor Baptists was over there trying to convince him that God does supernatural things. And poor little old Baptists don't even believe his help that God does supernatural things. So they're over here arguing about that God still does miracles when they ain't ever seen wonders. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're trying their best. And this is, this is one of them people that's just loud and pushy and bullying. And... I got involved in a conversation. And when I got through it, I, I, so I, just, I got a supernatural story for everything that moves. <laughs> what would you like to hear today, man? I don't even know. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff, felt all kinds of stuff, been all kinds of things. God is, man, it's supernatural. It's normal to me. And here's somebody saying, God don't do that. And I just stopped it and said, how did you get saved? It's the Church of Christ. Well, I got baptized. I said, well, if you got saved, that was super. Natural. He said, well, except for getting saved, there ain't no supernatural things. Oh, wow. <laughs> I said, well, uh. So it don't take long you start telling stories. And here I am standing in the middle of this place that I work, and I'm telling them people's stories. And he says something, he just, sooner or later, he just, and the Baptist people that usually, if you try to tell them about a miracle story, man, they just, man, now that you little funny. They used to stay back over there and tell me that's, uh, you know, and there wasn't none of that going on. It was more like, hit him again. 
You ever seen a fight on a playground? There's two people fighting and then there's this big crowd of people around this inner circle that's saying, hit him again. And then there's this crowd that comes from everywhere. I started telling him my testimony. Oh, that'll get you going. God appearing and speaking to you. An audible voice. Oh my God. Seeing a light and all these things and then telling him about it. And I looked up and I mean, everybody in the building was surrounded. Us. They come out of offices. He'd been bullying a long time. And I got the chance to share my whole testimony with everybody that worked there at one time. Not trying to. Just accidentally happened. It was God. Why was that God? Because the place sold in just a couple of weeks and all them people scattered like the wind. And God gave me a shot before they all scattered. People I'd worked with for years in that place, 10 or 12 years, scattered like the wind. And after that guy left, he called me all the time. I was now his friend. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever stood up to him. They just had people just said, oh, yeah, I can't prove anything. Well, I can prove it. My testimony equals a whole lot of somebody else's sayings. You know how to really convince them? Let's pray. God's got a sense of him. You can pray for somebody. And we'll pray for people just out in the parking lot lots of times. And their hands start to float up. And I ain't never figured out why, but they do. It started a few years ago. Somebody says, you know, will you pray for us? We start to pray. And, I'm like, mm. and I've, seen, I've seen people, I open up and they'd be looking and saying, am I lifting? Are you lifting my hands? We're lifting my hands all the time. Don't put your faith in that thing. But I'm telling you, God has ways. And he don't care if you're Baptist or not. Nope. Right. He don't care if you're Catholic. He don't care if you're a heathen. He does not care. Right. But, but what I want you to notice is that you are a product of a supernatural act in which you died and the life of God entered into you. Amen. That's what being born again right. is. It is as supernatural as it gets. So I said I was going to tell this. I'll tell it. These are them things, like I said, you know. Uh, we was doing the, we was ministering yesterday, and uh, and we ministered on worship. And while we were ministering on worship, uh, toward the end, I had an experience with God. I have lots of those. Why does God give me lots of those? Because any experience I have has to pass the Bible test, or I just throw the experience plumb out in the yard. I have more spiritual experiences with God since I got so deep in the word of God that and, and one day I said, Lord, why why didn't you have why didn't I have all these experiences in the seventies? And he said, Because you would have followed around your experiences and then tried to make the Bible fit what you experienced. Amen. And people are doing it everywhere. And what I want to say, if it ain't in the word, I don't care if it floated by, landed on me, turned colors, I don't care. I tell you what, it better be in the scripture. Well, how do you know if it's in the Scripture? The Lord, show it to me in the Scripture. He'll show you two or three places for all kinds of things. You go, whew, I didn't know that was there. I feel better about it now. Mm -hmm. But just because it goes, bzzz, doesn't do nothing for me. You know? But I'm telling you this. So this is what happened. And I was, was on the last song, and we were, I think the last song was uh, Make Way for the King. And we was making way for the King, you know? And, and the presence of God was real strong where I was. And uh, I'll say that because I'm just in one place. I don't know what it's like any place else. All I know is what it's like where I am. And, and I was standing there, and I'm going to get off screen, but, but uh, that's the blessing and curse of being on tape or being on the Internet is that you have to stand in one spot. If anybody watched me preach for years, you know I wander around and around like somebody talking on the telephone. Did y'all ever do that? We didn't. We'd talk on the phone. We'd walk as far as the wire would reach and back. Mm -hmm. Get that extra long wire on that kitchen phone and you'd walk all the way forth and all the way back. I do that on a cell phone. There ain't no wire holding me down and I'm still walking as far as I can and back. And that's how I preach sometimes. I wonder, but I can't with this. But so we were having this worship, you know, and and it was a real stressful morning for me. I didn't tell nobody that yesterday. It was a real stressful morning for me. I woke up not feeling real well. 
The last time I ministered over there, I was flat sick before I went, but I just didn't feel well yesterday morning. And I don't like mornings anyway. Mornings are hard on me. I can't find anything in the morning. And But I knew what I was supposed to minister, and I knew what I was supposed to do, and I'm trying to set it all up. And then once you start, you say, this is what you said to do, God, but what if it don't work, and what if nobody don't participate? What if they just all sit there and go, I've had services like that. And what, I, what am I going to do? I ministered on that type of thing once in the 80s, like 88. And the whole room full of people sat in their chairs and did not move. You'd have had to see it. It's on the internet. I put it on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I, put, I put the link maybe on Facebook, but it's on YouTube. And, and the thing that I remember most is not nobody participating. It's that afterwards, for two weeks, different men would come up to me and say, you know, if you'd have just went a little longer, I was just about to get out of my seat. I was just about to dance. I was just about to, but you quit too soon. Quit too soon? I went 45 minutes. <laughs> That's a true story. And I'm thinking about that. Yesterday, I'm thinking, oh, there we go again. You know, do I really want to do this? But God said to do it. And so we're, we're going to do it, you know. And we're, in, and we're down toward the end of it. And I still ain't sure how good it worked because I keep my eyes shut when I'm worshiping God. And, but I open my eyes and I look down because we was moving with my feet. And I was looking to make sure I wasn't going to step on. I think the Kleenex is in my shoes and something else is down below the pulpit. And I'm looking down. I look down and I have, I have feet for a moment, just like these, in my socks. And I look down and I no longer have any feet. I mean, they're gone. No, it wasn't an acid trip. I ain't never done none of that. No flashbacks. You know, maybe somebody in the 70s couldn't have that one. But no, only drugs I've ever seen has been in a baggie, somebody else's baggie. One of them was about that long one time. Left it in the car I cleaned. Had a bag of marijuana that big. Said Sheriff's Department evidence room. Coffee County. Wow. <laughs> Somebody said, let's call Channel 5. And I said, let's not. <laughs> let's leave it alone and mind our own business. Amen. The woman was like 80 years old. Somebody in her family was transporting drugs wow. under the seat of her car. But I didn't get in the middle of that. So here I am worshiping God. And I look down and I had feet. But now I suddenly don't have any. That would freak some people out didn't bother me too bad just say lord what does this mean <laughs> because i even though i didn't have any feet all i had was the bottoms of these these little things and nothing hanging out down there i was still standing what i'm telling you the honest truth i wasn't gonna tell this and i and i said well lord what is going on of course you don't say it out loud because you're still worshiping and you're making way for the king and in a minute you got to pray for whoever wants whatever and is somebody gonna need deliverance in a minute that i know of and so i'll look away for the king and then suddenly i have no feet <laughs> where'd my feet go lord huh huh he said i hid them in me you're not you're not standing here in your own strength you're not going to minister in a minute in your own strength. Yes, mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? You're not going to pray for deliverance for this lady in a minute in your strength. I'm standing in you. Amen. Your life is hid Amen. with Christ in Amen. God. Amen. You see what we're saying there? Amen. And when Christ who is our life. Amen. Ain't that something? Amen. So here I am standing here with no feet. And I can't tell anybody because that would just freak people out. Oh, I lost my feet. Help me. She lost her iPhone today, but we found it. You've been telling people you lost your feet in the worship service. They didn't have any fruit cake. We leave that place. But it was so cool because I'm sitting here looking, and they're coming back, moving out there. And no, he's going to stand. And that's when I realized that he's invisible. Amen. Now, he's been trying to teach me that for years and years and years when I don't see him, yet he's still there. Amen. Huh? Because we live by our faith Amen. and not by sight. Amen. We live by faith. He's been teaching me this for years. My brother spent six weeks in the hospital doing chemo and, 
after the chemo, he got really sick, had a real high fever for five weeks, stayed over over 100 most of the time for five weeks, 107 sometimes. It's supposed to kill you, and he nearly died several times, and you'd go in and daddy would say, go in there and pray for him so he can die easy. I couldn't do it. I'd go in there and pray that God would heal him. Because go in there and rebuke the devil, and he'd turn, I mean, he'd be completely black, and he'd spew up his green stuff, and He'd be back for a while, and then a fever. And this went on and on. His uh, port was infected. To this day, they ain't put no port in me. <laughs> that port was infected, and it took him five weeks to find out that that's what it was. Wow. Nearly killed him. He got it put in because his girlfriend told him it'd be easier on him, and then she dumped him. Well, that worked out well. <laughs> True story. Dumped him while he was in there. He thought, hmm. And that was such a bad experience for me. The, and I, I tell every now and then about having to go to the hospital and go to that same room. I mean, I can smell the smells. It was not pretty. And go through all that. And, and years later, we talking, he got healed. I told y'all before he got healed, but nobody ever heard it. He got healed because uh, I was, it was my shift to stay with him. He was dying and it was my shift to stay with him. The nurses had done told us they're just going to make him as comfortable as possible. And he's supposed to be dying and, you know, and I was so afraid he was going to die on my shift because I was there from uh, right after work till I think 11. I think at 11 my other brother came in to stay with him. So I was there, whatever it was, from after work till 11, till 11 right in there. And then uh, I came back in the morning and stayed a couple hours before I went to work. My mama come in. So we had this shift thing going because somebody was with him all the time. And... Uh, and he just, uh, they done told us the signs to look for, you know, and all them signs was very evident. And uh, had, his chest was filling up and he had uh, a lot of chest pain. And uh, had faith that God would heal him a year before, you know, when all this started. But after your faith gets drained out, moment by moment and day by day, guys. And so we were... Uh, we were down to all I could think was he's going to die on me and I'm going to have to watch him die. And uh, he was my brother and my best friend growing up. He's the only friend I had growing up. We moved so much. And uh, while uh, he said his chest was hurting and there wasn't anything else we could, could do or anything. So uh, I just stood beside the bed and took his, I either took his hand or put my hand on his chest. I don't really remember which now. And we prayed in tongues. And uh, we prayed in tongues for about two or three minutes, and he said the pain stopped. So we stopped, and then the pain came back. And we prayed in tongues for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. We prayed till it was time for my shift to be over, and I fully expected the, that he would uh, be passed away during the night, and you know, when I came in the next morning. Because uh, that was my big goal. My big goal was to get out of that hospital room. I'm being honest with you. I had zero faith. And zero that I could tell. Enough to pray in tongues that his pain would ease. Okay? That's all I was praying in English. And when we uh, came back the next day, he was not only still alive, his chest didn't hurt. And the next night on my shift, we prayed in tongues again for the next symptom. And in five days, he was well enough to get locked out of the hospital. <laughs> or he went outside for a walk. In a year, he was back working, did everything, lived no 20 some years, long enough to take up smoking and have a stroke and not take his diabetic medicine and do all the normal things men do. Yeah. Be married several times. I mean, just all the normal things. It's like God healed him. And that's where I learned you didn't have to have million dollar faith. You just had to take what faith you had. If you have dollar faith, use it a million times. <laughs> if you've got dying faith, just get ready. Just use what you got. And years later, it looked like uh, another one of my brothers had just come to the Lord after all kinds of years of doing all the wrong things. And it looked like he was going to prison for 10 years is what it looked like. And uh, I knew somebody was going to beep in if I didn't cut it off. Uh, but uh, it looked like he was, and it had that same feeling, that same feeling that I'm going to lose a brother, you know, and all this stuff. And I was setting it to computer and I tried to... Uh, send a prayer request to somebody, but they were busy. And that happens sometimes. That's the best thing that ever happened. Somebody being too busy to, 
to pray with you because then God may have to show up and do it for you. And uh, all of a sudden, I smelled that darn smell from that hospital room, and I felt myself going back to that hospital room, and I did everything in my power to drag myself out of this experience. Was you in a dream? No, I was wide awake. And here I was going back to that hospital room, and sure enough, there's the smell, there's the trash can full of vomit, there's, I'm trying not to be, trying to be as sweet as I can, because I don't always tell that part. I mean, it was bad. And, and here I was, my feet have hurt ever since I stood on my feet for them six weeks in that hospital. My feet never hurt till that. My feet still hurt. Every time my feet hurt, I think, yeah, it's all because it's in that darn hospital standing there. Why didn't you sit in the chair? Because he put the vomit thing in the chair and vomit on the chair, too. <laughs> it was not pretty. And so... See, I made you laugh. I make hospital scene laugh. And, and you, I can make millions of dollars being funny somewhere. But I'd be funny for Jesus instead. And here I, I saw it coming in. And there I was, standing there beside his bed, praying in tongues over him. And to look, you'd think I had all the faith in the universe. But I knew what it felt like on the inside. And there he is laying there. And there's Jesus standing on the other side of the bed. Got his hand on his chest. I didn't see that the first time. I didn't see that them years before. What happened? God was taking me back because even though I survived it the first time and my brother got well, I was still scarred by how close it came to losing. Okay? Now that goes with your life being hid with Christ in God. What does that mean? That means when you're praying, He's right there with you right now. What? Praying. Amen. When you're telling somebody in your family about the Lord and they got every reason not to believe you because your life ain't perfect. Amen. <laughs> he's standing. Amen. Amen. Now see, in that, in that encounter, whatever that was that I had going back to that hospital room, I saw me on one side and him on the other. But the progression was, yesterday I saw me no longer standing and him just standing there whether I could see him. And the first one, he was with me. In. See the difference between with and in? I, if I ever had to go to prison, I'd want him to go with me, but I'd sure a lot rather have him in. You see what I'm saying? For Jesus. Mark, you see what I'm saying? If you have to go somewhere you don't want to go, I want him to go with me, but I'd a whole lot rather have him go. Amen. And now notice what happens when Christ, is, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. glory. When he shows up, he's going to show, you're going to be with him. Is that okay? Yep. So, so that's where I'm going to stop. Was well, that a good place to stop? Yes, it is. Why is it a good place to stop? Because that's where God stopped. I could go on without him.